Welcome back. I know Kara said no more follow-up videos on the sugar thing, and, but I gotta make one more. We talked about how uh, when she ate too many desserts in Germany, it made her age and she looked older and she didn't feel good and all that. And then she did one on a two week sugar fast and you know, all this, well, you guys don't know what. So anyway, so what, what I wanna talk about real quick, and this is the last thing I'm gonna talk about, is why sugar causes aging and wrinkles and things like that. I already talked about this a couple times in other videos and either there's some new people who just came on board and don't know that or some people just plain old forgot. So I'm gonna remind you. And I'm also gonna talk about a little bit more in depth about certain things, certain misconceptions, namely fructose versus glucose. We're gonna talk about glycation. And we're going to talk about fat and aging and sugar. I'm gonna get through all this really fast. So let's just clear up some misconceptions and just give you a little bit of a crash course as to what it is. Um, sugar, yes, the body can run on sugar. It is a fuel. Almost everything you eat turns into sugar through the form of glucose or glycogen. The sugar found in fruit is fructose, which is a slightly different form of sugar, and it does react a little bit differently in the body. It goes right to the liver, and I'll get into that in a minute. But let's get to some of the main things first. First thing is, why does sugar age? There's several reasons. Okay, there's hormones that age you and hormones that do the opposite, make you younger. One of the hormones that makes you younger is HGH, human growth hormone makes cells grow, keeps you perky, keeps things working, it's really good. And as you age, you get less and less of this stuff in your body. Human growth hormone is tricky though because it's only released under certain conditions. It stops releasing altogether when another hormone is present. And that hormone is insulin. Insulin is released when you eat pretty much anything. Almost everything you eat releases insulin, except if you're eating pure fat, and how many people eat just pure fat. Whenever you eat pretty much anything you eat, insulin gets released, HGH production is stopped, and insulin, there's several hormones that promote the aging process. Insulin is one of the main ones, another one is cortisol, which is stress released. So really the two biggest things for aging are stress and sugar and smoking, but we all know that, right? So when you eat, HGH production is stopped, Insulin is released. Insulin is necessary. I mean, it does a lot of things that's necessary in the body. It's what tells the body's cells to open up to absorb and take in energy for fuel. Problem is most people eat junk. So when the cells open up, they take in fat and junk and all kinds of crap and then the cells close up and now they've got fat and junk in them. People wonder why they're getting fat and unhealthy. Also, they have too much sugar in their diet. So now there's too much insulin. Your pancreas goes because it's overworked and you have way too much insulin in your body. And I'm gonna get to this in a minute because that is kind of a critical thing as to why people have a lot of weight gain and health issues. But let's talk about another issue as to why sugar causes aging. And that is a process called glycation. Glycation is a process that happens when you eat sugar. Now sugar molecules like to attach themselves to lipid and protein molecules, especially elastin and collagen in the skin. It starts cross-linking the proteins. This process produces what's called advanced glycolization end products, or AGEs, which cause protein fibers to become stiff and malformed, resulting in wrinkles, stiffness, and loss of elasticity, otherwise known as accelerated aging. Also, the body does not recognize AGEs as normal, so it releases antibodies, which cause inflammation in the skin, and it's just this, this battle starts raging in your body. Um, sugar is also de a dehydrating agent, so that makes your body release more oils, and it also affects water binding to your skin. If you have dry skin, flaky skin, cracking skin, look at the sugar in your diet. Look at all the places where you're getting sugar. Look, you got dark circles. Do you like sweets? Hmm, think about that. Anyway, typical sugars involved in glycation are glucose, obviously, and fructose. People don't know that. And I'm gonna get to that in a minute. Fruit's not bad. It's just how much fructose you get. I'll get to that in a minute. But glycation is a biomarker of diabetes and is implicated in some diseases like aging. So glycation is a really big cause of aging and you might wanna look more into that, but that's, I'm just listing off the reasons here. So, okay, so we have the stopping of HGH, we have glycation. 
Um, now let's get to fructose, because fructose is kind of a misunderstanding of a lot of people. Fructose is a sugar that's found in fruit. It's actually good for you, and it's been eaten forever since the beginning of time. People have eaten fruit and fructose. It's, it's great, it's good for you if you eat it the way nature intended. You pluck an apple from the tree and you eat it. That's the way it's intended. You pick an orange from the tree and you eat it. You don't juice the orange, because now you're throwing the fiber away and you're concentrating the sugars. You like it more because there's a lot more sugar in it and then you become addicted to it and now you have sugar crashes and all these things. So the point is, fructose is good because throughout history, people have eaten fructose. They normally get 16 to 20 grams of it per day. That's fine and that's what you're supposed to do. Nowadays, <laughs> it's just fructose overload. I mean, I'm sure you've heard of high fructose corn syrup, right? That's a lot of fructose and it's way too much and it causes problems. Obesity, diabetes, health problems. There are fruit people who say, fructose is good, it's good, it's all right. Yes, it is. It actually, in small amounts, it actually is good for you. It helps things work properly. It, it, it's good for you. But again, you need to eat it the way nature intended whole fruit or blending it. Blending is it okay because you still have the fiber in there, but just try not to juice the fruit too much. I mean, if you put a little bit of fruit juice in your smoothie, it's okay if you got a lot of greens and things like that. Think about it, the longest living animals in nature and the shortest living ones. What's one of the shortest living animals in nature? A hummingbird. What does it live off of? Sugar. It goes it's just buzzing all over the place. It's really fast, it's really fast. And then it dies. Like, you know, it's like, and the shortest, the longest living animals the ones that live forever, longer than humans, they just munch on greens. All they do all day is just eat greens. Lumpy dopey do. The longest living animals eat greens. The shortest living ones eat, they buzz on sugar. And meat eaters also don't live as long as the, as the lo ones that just munch on green stuff. Now, there's monkeys that live, that eat a lot more fruit. They don't live as long as the monkeys and gorillas that eat half fruit, half greens. So keep that in mind. It's all about balance. It's all about how much of each thing you have. It's not that something is good or bad for you, it's how much of it. Like water is, you need water, right? Well, if you have too much of it, it's called drowning. That's not good. Same with fructose, same with everything else. You need certain amounts. Now, that's an, let me get to another thing. Before people say, you need it. And I'm gonna jump it back and forth here a bit, but there is a common misconception that stable glucose levels are necessary for their body to run properly. That low blood sugar is bad for you, and that's why people try to eat all day long. Every, you know, they're just munching all day long, eat three meals a day. Constantly consuming carbohydrates to maintain blood glucose is not only not necessary, it can be detrimental to your long-term health. Now again, I'm not talking about whole fruits. I'm talking about refined carbs here. I'm jumping back and forth. I just want, you know, but we're talking about sugar here. So I want people to understand they think they need to eat carbs for energy. In the uh, fruit world, the, the vegan vegetarian world, people think, well, fruit juice is a carb, therefore I'm just gonna go crazy with fruit juice. So the way it works is when you eat, almost everything you eat has some amount of carbs or sugar in it, which makes insulin get released in your body, which triggers your cells to open up to receive this fuel to run the body. The problem is people have too many carbs and too much sugar. So the body tries to deal with, and if you do have too much of that, glucose in your system and things like that, then you start getting glycation cross-linking of proteins and other things like that. So in other words, to prevent all these problems from happening, your body tries to do something with this excess of glucose in your system. So what it does is it, it can store up to 70 grams, something like that, in your liver. It can store about another 200 grams in your muscles, and the rest of it gets turned into fat, stored away for later use. That energy cannot be used, this is, this is the other thing, fats actually have much better energy source than sugar. It's much cleaner burning, it's much more efficient, you don't get the sugar crash, it lasts longer, that's why the keto thing is so big. Now the problem is, and you don't even need to eat fat. If you don't eat at all, then your body starts using your own fat as an energy source. I'll get to that in a minute. The hormone that makes your body use fat for energy is hormone sensitive lipase, and that gets released only when there's no insulin. When you have insulin in your body, running around in your bloodstream because you just ate carbs, fat cannot be used for energy. And that's 
That's the catch-22. You're getting all this fat building up, but your body can't use it as long as insulin is present. As long as insulin is anywhere in your body, no fat can be used for energy or fuel. And like I said, everything you eat pretty much releases insulin. So as long as you're eating, you're not gonna use fat for energy. It's gonna be using the carbs that you're eating. And then you're probably gonna have too much sugar and too many carbs, so some of that gets turned into fat, so you're constantly gaining a little bit more fat, and you keep eating to get more energy, but you can never use that fat that you're accumulating for energy unless you stop eating. And this is why fasting is so important. That's why intermittent fasting is such a great thing for so many reasons. So that's why people are eating all the time. That's why if they don't eat every two hours, they, they, they go crazy because they have so much insulin in their system so the fat can't be used as energy so they need more carbs to keep the energy going. So they have to keep eating and they have to keep eating. And that's a vicious cycle and it accelerates the aging process. It's just a habit that needs to be broken. And it's difficult for the first uh, you know, bit, first few weeks as people try to accustom themselves to eating less during the day. I'm not talking about eating um, less calories than you need. I'm just talking about eating all the calories you need for a day in a shorter amount of time. That's intermittent fasting. See, after about 10 or 12 hours, all the glucose is used up. It's pulled out of your liver, it's pulled out of your muscles, it's pulled out of your system. There's no more glucose to run for fuel. So the body says, okay, I guess it's time to use my backup system, and that's the fat. The body uses something called ketone bodies to do that. People think we need carbs to live. We don't. You can live totally off of, you know, indefinitely without carbohydrates if, if you want. If you, you know, I'm not saying you have to. I'm just saying you could if you had to. The liver produces as much glucose as you would ever need. So it's made in your body anyway. The liver makes glucose. It makes a form of sugar. The body's amazing. It can turn fat into sugar, sugar into fat. I mean, it can do all these things. It's, it's like a survival genius. It can do almost anything. Humans eat a lot more than they need. They say, you know, the saying, one quarter of what you eat is to make you function, to live, and three quarters of what you eat feeds the doctor. <laughs> Keep that in mind. Um, there's a doctor in Japan, Dr. Yoshinori Nagumo. He's a surgeon, and he only eats once a day. He looks 20, 30 years younger than he really is. And he wrote a book called Hunger Makes People Healthy. I'm not saying to starve yourself. What I'm saying is to eat a full day's amount of calories in a shorter amount of time. It doesn't have to be just, you know, one hour. Instead of eating all day long, like I said, I made a video called uh, nothingtill4.com. I have a website, nothingtill4. That was a suggestion of mine. Don't eat anything till four o'clock or at least two o'clock or whatever. And then eat in a shorter amount of time, eight hours, then make it four hours. That's what we're down to. We're about three to four hours is our, our eating window, and then we don't eat the rest of the time. Aging creates DNA damage, and not eating activates certain proteins that actually can repair the DNA damage, and which leads to longer life. Many fasting benefits come from the depletion of glucose stores, forcing the body to dip into ketosis. Now, this, is, this does not mean go out there and eat animals. Go out there and eat lots of fat. I'm talking about your own fat. You can live off your own fat. So I'm not saying to do all keto diet because I'm not a keto guy, all right? I do have fats in my diet, but like I said, everything's in balance. Half greens, half fruit, some nuts and seeds. That's what we eat. We blend it, we eat it whole. We don't juice a lot of fruit, hardly ever. That's what we do. You wanna know what we do and I'm trying to tell you why it works. People who do nothing but fruit juice and very little greens or all animal products, that's not balanced. Everything in balance. I mean, you gotta, I mean, there's healthy fats, coconuts, avocados, nut butters. Just eat as close to nature as possible. When you chew nuts, you create nut butter. <laughs> so nut butter's not exactly unnatural. And fructose is totally natural. So let's talk about fructose for a minute because fructose is natural. Fructose is readily absorbed and metabolized by the liver. You need to eat it the way nature intended, in the form that it was intended. If you concentrate the sugars, now you got too much sugar and not enough fiber and not enough oil. So everything's in balance. Nature's already figured it out. Studies involving commonly consumed fruit juices showed that natural fructose carbohydrates can alter lipid and protein oxidation biomarkers in the blood and mediate oxidative stress responses. I'm gonna put links to all this below. And if you don't understand what I'm saying, just read the stuff. I mean, maybe it'll make sense once you start reading it. And I'm gonna put links below 
below to research showing the difference between the short-term positive effects of fructose and the negative effects of chronic long-term. So these people, the, the fruitarians, they eat nothing but fruit and a lot of sugar and don't really eat a lot of greens, not a lot of healthy fats. The, that's why a lot of them start looking older. Their skin starts wrinkling, their hair starts falling out, other than of course the, the sugar and the, the acids from the fruit making their teeth fall out. But they're, they're, you need everything in balance. If you eat more greens, that keeps your teeth from getting eaten up by the acids from the sugars. There, there's so many things. The fats help slow down the rate of release of the sugars in your body so you have longer energy. Everything works together in balance. Short term, good. Long term, nothing but, mm, that's not so good. You need everything in balance. And because fructose can go right to the liver bypassing the regulatory step of glycolysis, it can result in overproduction of triglycerides. Now you don't want that either. And although fructose does not acutely raise insulin levels, chronic exposure to it can lead to hyperinsulinemia, obesity, and another term to check out is metabolic syndrome, if you want to learn more about all of this. Again, the links are below. So I'm just touching on some key points here as to why sugar ages you. Um, and yes, there are different kinds of sugar, but too much of anything is not good. Oxygen, oxygen, we need it, right? Well too much oxygen is not good either because it's an oxidant. Oxygen oxidizes. That's why antioxidants are the big thing because they make you not oxidize as quickly. So too much oxygen is not good. Too much water is not good. Too much sugar of any kind is not good. Too much of anything is everything needs to be in balance. So that's what it comes down to. If you eat the way nature intended, if you actually eat whole fruit, not juicing them, but eating whole fruit or blending it, you know, if you chew food enough, it's, that's blending it in your mouth. But if you were to just eat whole fruit, cutting it up into a bowl and eating it with no sugar added, just natural stuff, even maybe some greens mixed in there, whatever, just stuff you find in nature, it's almost impossible to overeat. It's almost impossible to get too much sugar in your system. It's almost impossible to get too many fats, sugars, carbs, anything. If you eat the way nature intended, you will get pretty much everything the way it's supposed to be in your system. And don't eat just one thing. Eat a, a number of things. The Japanese diet, they eat a bunch of little things. They don't just eat one thing. They eat, I don't, I don't, I don't want to piss off the mono people here. All right, so you eat nothing but one type of fruit for a meal. Great, that's wonderful. You go to a, an apple tree, you eat nothing but apple. How many apples can you really eat before you're full? If you went up to an apple tree and you ate just, you know, apple, apple. I bet after two apples, you can't eat more. Nature has a regulatory system to keep you from overeating. You can't overeat apples. You can't overeat anything in nature. So yeah, that's a mono meal. But I'll bet you'll get pretty bored of it after a while. And then the next day you walk over to the orange tree or, you know, even for dinner, you walk over and you have some arugula or asparagus or whatever, I don't know, whatever it is that's growing in nature. You need a bunch of different things. If you eat nothing but apples, you're not going to get the benefits of what asparagus would give you because that has different minerals and nutrients than this does. You need to have a little bit of everything in order to get the overall effect of what nature has to offer you. Anyway, so that I'm, oh, there's so much to cover here in so short amount of time. But anyway, I, I hope this um, helped a little bit. You need to control yourself. You need to control your urges and eat the way nature intended. If you want to live a long, healthy, happy life, not have health issues, slow down the aging process, and worst of all, not getting wrinkles. God forbid the wrinkles. Right? Okay. Because that's what it's about. It's not about health. It's about wrinkles. It's about looking good. That's what it's all about. Who cares about health? <sighs> yeah. Well, anyway, so. That's it. That's my last thing about the sugar. And I got to get on with more fun stuff. This stuff is just not fun to talk about. But people need to know it. It's important. Okay. I'll see you in the next video. Over and out. Bye-bye.